Sid Barrett of the Pink Floyd. What an odd little interview this is. It was done in London in 1967. I talked to other members of the group, but the tapes have been lost. I do recall they were all pretty ticked off at Sid because here the Pink Floyd was finally making it. They'd released their first album, The Piper at the Gates, and Sid had written or he'd co-written nine of the 11 songs. And now he was essentially non-functional. Apparently Sid had been taking a lot of trips and his eyes were so open it was like looking down into a tunnel. There were no barriers. I had to stop myself from tumbling down inside him. I think I now know what it's like to be Alice in Wonderland. The interview just sort of ends. It was obvious that it wasn't going anywhere else, so apparently I decided that's all there is to that. Here's Sid Barrett, London, 1967, 40 years ago. Wow. Do you mind if this is so good? Okay. Yeah. yeah. What if, uh, as I say, these things are so edited that, um, but in a very good way. <laughs> okay. Well, do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Well, I'll, I'll say, for example, painting at an art school, or painting, say, in infant school, the initial desire to paint, or the initial su first successes at painting, arise, I think, out of a very genuine basic um, drive one way or another so and and because of families and social setups they're channeled into success or otherwise and uh, th uh, through schools and such like and one gets different things and I think and, and of course one comes across teachers and people like that teaching and sort of instruction and t to talk to and they came and I feel now that having left art school that there are a lot of things um, that I could do a lot of things I see now a lot of things that went into me into my head and thinking that these were perhaps changing and altering things for instance I made a painting the other day and it's, I could I see and hear very clearly sort of different instructions and different criticisms going into the picture, which were in fact um, criticisms that I could relate back to school, art schools and teachers and various things that had come for at that time. So maybe this would be very valuable, this break. I don't know, and uh, sort of to try painting again after a break of, and going into pop music and going to playing this sort of music just might work out that you get more sort of basic freedom, I don't know, it's, a, it's something to do, just things like shape of the paper and uh, there seem to be a lot of assumptions taking place when you say criticisms, you meant critis your own criticisms of your work. Is that what you meant, or did you mean outside other people? Um, criticisms that I, I, well, you, I you, you really, d yeah. They were your own criticisms of your own work. Yeah. That, that were sort of put they, into you by teachers and so on. They were what I was channeling into my own criticism. Yeah. They were what they were what were governing what I was doing. And to pay, uh, while it was happening. Do you ever get, I don't know, frightened by, I use this word because it's, it applies to me, by uh, the systems that, I mean this in a sense, I don't know, could be a better word, but this in a sense is, you know, you, is a system when, when you realize that the criticisms that you're using um, have been put into you, you know, sort of conditioned or whatever. But, but when you realize more and more what it is that controls all the systems that, you know, system upon system, and sort of 
working your way through one into another into another. Does this really bother you? Or even frighten you? The feeling that you'll never be free, that you'll always be a prisoner. But maybe you don't have that feeling. Yeah, I do. Do you think you can be free if you can realize, I mean, get to a point where you realize, you know, more and more and more systems, perhaps? I th yeah, I think uh, maybe, maybe... S the realization sort of freeing one. Uh, yeah, well, yes, in, in slowly in time, you know. It's, it, well, it happened with this painting. I mean, I, I, having finished a picture, I got through a lot of things. I mean, one, I mean, it's quite enjoyable, you know. I mean, the idea is to... I would like to get hold of that and, and be able to assimilate the, the system as it comes in rather than, um, you know, see it as it goes out. find yourself in patterns and constantly repeating the same patterns over and over. Mm. Yeah. Inside yourself. Do you know? Yeah. Do you care to say? Um, I can't. I sort of. I can't really say because it's obviously taking too much time to think about. I don't. I. Th it's, um, it's not really difficult. Do you ever feel when you see people, or do you often feel when you see people, that you could tell them something about themselves that they don't already know, perhaps? Or do you look at people that way? I feel you do, that you really sort of absorb people. Do you? No, I think there's something about... Um, wow, it really gets pretty involved at this stage. I can't see it. Yeah, there is a... I certainly do get a, a feeling of what people are like. And a, a, it really, the really, the the complication comes out in talking, but this only comes out at certain times because of a feeling that the talking is, in fact, a much a far less uh, valuable thing than, uh, and it's almost <coughs> superfluous to 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 everything else, you know, to sort of general, I don't know, sensing people, you know, sort of value of people. 
but at the same time, it's a contradiction that the word, that words and talking to the people should be difficult in any way. So one goes, one is hesitant to say, "No, I can't say anything." You know. And knowing as well that this is something that occurs only at times, you know, and at other times it doesn't. And it's cool. Yeah, maybe that I think more in terms of words when I, you know, see someone and have an impression. I mean, like, your impression of me which you must have, um, would you care to tell me and be, like, absolutely honest? Do you have one? In words? Yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> I mean, really be honest. And I'm asking this because you may have something to give me, I don't know. And not the <coughs> general things, I mean, whatever. I mean, what the main thing that sort of hits you? And I, I'm not asking for a personality critique, you know, because I know enough about myself that I don't need that. Well, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's so many different things that on different levels that I could say, the impressions of you. Shall I give us, I don't know, I just, maybe the most strange thing is um, meeting you at all, mm. sort of just saying, very strange to meet you. I mean, it isn't really strange. I mean, it's not many people that that sort of one can. I mean, interviewers and such like. As, as and you came into that class. Well, um, sort of used to. I mean, generally, you just sort of say hello and to get to say the questions and go again. I don't know. Very. I don't know. <laughs> I feel you're holding back. That's yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't, c you know, it, it may be something that sends me back, and I'm not, it may be, you know, probably not anything I'm going to wa want anyone to hear. I mean, so not, <laughs> not at all. I c understand. I think I learn a lot from you, and. Uh, The thing, the, 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 you see, there's the. I mean, I know, I know, I feel from you that in f that you know, really, that I could say anything and do anything, and you would. I mean, you're recording it, and that's cool. And uh, yeah. but I could, and I know that applies to you, to me, and you. You know. Because really, I, I, you are, I assure you, you can do anything you want. To. But and in talking, I mean, that includes if I want to, if I wanted to say nothing, or if I, if I want to act in an ex an extraordinary way, then I feel that that too is justified. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like... Except it's probably not an equal balance, because... You know, what I'm doing is being... being very intimate and recording it. But also... Um, I feel very responsible and when I say I edit, 
um, there's certain things that you know that I I simply don't use, and it's a it's a sort of ethical thing. I sort of have to say, um, well, sense of you know, sense of justice in a sense, which I have a very strong sense of justice. That is um, not going to someone and being intimate and getting them to talk about things, say which sometimes is not difficult. Um, things that are really bothering them, that is, it can be personal relationships, you know, or something like that, and then using it, you know, which I don't think should be. I don't know, do, do you see, in a, in a sense what I'm saying is that, that I feel conscious much of the time that I am recording, um, but I also am trying to communicate silently to people and say, it's all right, you know, that is, it's, it's, if there's anything that you know a person feels bad about, um, or or what I was talking about, opening up, which um, at a certain point working on something unconsciously and not knowing, I mean, not, you know, not consciously knowing it, or maybe maybe a little bit of it consciously knowing, and then running into someone. And somehow or another, a conversation is struck off sometimes immediately, and and they tell you something, and and maybe they go off and you never see them again, or, or maybe you, know, you see them sometime later. In short, they're they're like someone said about whenever she needs to be told something, she'll she'll find someone who will tell her. They'll just pop up, and they'll tell her, and then they go off again. Yeah. And it may be a friend, so it isn't this sense of one meets them in the street, though it could be that even, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny thing. That's why, that's why I asked you that. Because, I don't know, you know, maybe in a sense there's something I could tell you, I don't know what it would be. And the same thing, you know. I've done this a couple of times, not not in interviews, but when you know when I met someone who you can see in their eyes, in depth, and they're saying, "Do you have anything to tell me?" 